Hey, this is Megan with Karma Keys Doing Something Good. Each week, we interview thought leaders, change makers, and awesome people who are working to make the world a better place. Today, we're excited to sit down with Brent Freeman from Roost.com. Hi, Brent. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Megan. Thank you for having me. So tell us about Roost.com. Sure. Roost is a, an online platform to connect the most inspiring socially conscious brands with a generation of online shoppers that are demanding more from their companies. Oh, okay. So what are some of those socially conscious brands that you feature? That's a great question. We actually work with all sorts of retail brands, anywhere from wooden watches that plant a tree to everyone you buy to um, homemade, handmade nutrition bars um, that help local schools do fundraising. Uh, and really everywhere in between, um, consumer electronics, voice-activated alarm clock company that helps people with seeing impairments ease their, uh, their life. Um, really, for us, it's all about what does the company do that's built into their business model that's helping make the world a more positive, better place uh, for the environment, for their employees, for humanity as a whole, or for their local communities. Great. And how do you hook up with these companies? We actually um, we have a, a tremendous database. Uh, we've been in the space for the, the last several years um, and have done a lot of research and talked to a lot of people and have some tremendous um, partnerships uh, with uh, inspiring organizations where these these uh, these social entrepreneurs are launching their businesses out of or are helping incubate them to grow. So we probably have about 50% of the companies that we research and try to find ourselves, and then 50% of people are coming to us, uh, which is which is wonderful. Yeah. And what are you most proud of? at Roots.com? Man, um, that's a great question. I mean, we're very, we're very excited about where we are in the space in general. In general. Um, it's a really exciting time for social entrepreneurship because there's been a consumer-driven paradigm shift, making companies be more socially responsible from big brands to small startups alike and everywhere in between. Um, I'm very excited and proud of, of where that movement has gone, but quite frankly, the, the most proud thing that I am is that uh, about a year ago, uh, I embedded myself in, uh, in a, a classroom in downtown Los Angeles to teach social entrepreneurship uh, to a group of 35 uh, sophomores, 15-year-old kids in a, an urban Los Angeles high school. Uh, we partnered with an organization called the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, or NIFTY as it's, as it's known. And um, they have a tremendous curriculum to teach entrepreneurship to at-risk, low-income youth. But I wanted to harness their curriculum to say it's not just enough to teach entrepreneurship. In today's environment, you actually have to teach social entrepreneurship because within the next five years, um, if you don't have something built into your business model, you will be the margin. Uh, you will be the jerk not doing something. And quite frankly, in the market, because this is a consumer-driven paradigm shift, you will be irrelevant. Um, and so we wanted to see if we could harness Nifty's curriculum in a pilot program for one year. I embedded myself there and every week went in and, and with their teacher helped them understand the fundamentals of for-profit, for-difference entrepreneurship. Uh, and then to make it real for the kids, we did a classroom competition where Roost partnered with my corporation, which is like a legal Zoom, but for entrepreneurs exclusively, to say the winner of our classroom competition could actually get a free incorporation or LLC to make their dream a reality. And it was wonderful because the kids really took it seriously and, and um, we had a great competition for our classroom on campus at USC and the winner of our class, um, her name was Haley, she actually uh, created a brilliant business concept for soluble rice paper sugar packets that she has a patent on now. She incorporated through uh, her prize, won $1,500 because she ended up winning the regional competition for Nifty as a whole. And then last week, the most exciting thing and what I'm so proud about, last week she went to compete nationally with amongst, uh, it was 25,000 kids that had submitted business plans through Nifty, um, and she won the entire competition. So yeah, it was wonderful, and, and um, all top three business plans were social enterprises, for profit, for difference. Two, Roost had helped actually incorporate um, through our initiative with MyCorp, uh, and our student won the entire thing. and so. Very proud of her, very proud of the program, and we're actually expanding to uh, 1,200 students in greater LA and 50 plus classrooms this year and nationally next year. So um, that's what we're really, really proud of because that's the next generation of, of leaders and um, you know, future brands who can, uh, who can sell with us. Okay, so talking about the future, I noticed that Roost.com is going to have a web redesign soon. 
Tell us about that. So for the last year, we operated a daily deal flash sale business exclusively for socially conscious brands. Um, and we have a rating system of how we define what is socially conscious. Um, and we said, you know, let's see if we can create any demand and buzz and see if there's a market out there. Because a year ago, it was in two years ago, it wasn't, we weren't certain. We had a gut feeling. We knew we saw this shift happening. But you know, you never know until you actually go out into the market. And so we spent a year seeing if we could, you know, create vendor relationships, bring value to them, uh, bring value to our customers, and get some excitement around what we're doing. And um, we did. We we signed up over ninety thousand people in a very short amount of time to become members. Featured over a hundred companies. Um, created over two hundred plus brand relationships and strategic partnerships. And then Forbes featured us as a, a name you need to know in twenty eleven. And so we said, you know, deals are a great, a great way to acquire customers and get people's attention. But it's not just about a deal for us. It's about acquiring the customer for the brand and making that customer a brand ambassador, a true brand ambassador. Uh, and so we didn't just sell deals. We sold ratings and stories behind what each company did. Uh, and so it wasn't about the, the what. The what is the deal. But what people really engaged in is the why. Why should they support this company? Why should they support this brand? Um, and so that worked really, really well for everybody, both for customers, for us, and for our brands. So we wanted to expand that ecosystem to say it shouldn't just be deals. It should be everything. It should be entire product catalogs. It should be we should give the ability for all of our brands to be able to have e-commerce as a whole democratized, right? Shouldn't have this massive barrier of entry to if you if you build a website, then you can't get customers. If you're talking to an empty room, it doesn't matter. So what we wanted to do and what we envisioned and what we're about 30 days away from launching um, is a full service marketplace similar to what Etsy did for artists and artisans will be doing for socially conscious brands. Um, shoppers can come in and actually to discover new brands, uh, engage with their stories, shop from their full product lines and deals, and then share with their friends and get rewards. Right, And it's not just, hey, I made this great purchase of a watch. It's, hey, I found this awesome company that's doing XYZ impact. We think you should try it too. So it's a more curated shopping experience, um, more fun. Certainly it's Web 2.0. It's sexy. It's hip. You know, it's, it's Gen Y focus. Um, and, and that's kind of the future of, of where we're going. Lots more to it going on behind the scenes, but that's all I can disclose right now. Okay. Final question. What's your legacy? When you look back on your life, what will you be remembered for? Wow. Light question to end it off with. <laughs> I know. It's the last question. Big question. Um, you know, it's, really, it's a really good question because it gets at the core of why I'm doing this and why we started this business. Um, my last, my first venture that I, I had ever started was um, in the commodities world. And I was so disheartened um, by the exploitation that went on in that world and um, all of the you know, most successful people being the most miserable people um, in, in the world. And, and their legacy, you know, they thought their legacy would just be the money that they could leave to their family and kids. And um, for me, that's not who I am and what I wanted to do. And so we started Roost as uh, a means to be able to create a positive impact in the world that um, creates a ripple effect that inspires people um, for generations out that we don't even know will have an effect on um, to help prove to the world that in a, in a mainstream way that you can make a difference and a profit at the same time those two concepts don't need to be mutually exclusive but actually the way forward is to harness business to create positive change in the world um, and so the legacy that I hope to leave is to be able to inspire and empower others um, to go and, and you know, sail away from the safe harbor and um, you know, catch the, the trade winds in their sail and, and um, dream and achieve. Great. Thank you, Brent, for joining right. us today. And be the good. Thank you so much, Megan. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.